Well, amen to that. Advertisement for this evening. Did y'all notice on Wednesday I had a stronger voice than I had this morning? Do you think that is not indicative of what I've been trying to teach you on Sunday evenings? Come tonight and learn some more about this thing called spiritual warfare, if you would please. I think you will be blessed. Now, we are in um, Acts chapter 8 this morning, and you'll notice on the screen there that I have placed up there the New Living Translation. There's a reason for that this morning that I put the New Living Translation. There, there's a question, and it's there in the title. Uh, the question is, why can't I be baptized? And that's part of this story. Let me set the stage for you before we read the text in Acts chapter 8. Philip has been sent by the Holy Spirit down to this, uh, down to the Gaza Strip, to the Gaza Desert, and he's there in Gaza, and he is, he sees this chariot. Well, this is the treasurer. So I don't want you to think the chariots alone. You, you understand if this is the treasurer, he has guards around him. <laughs> so there'll be guards before him and guards after him and maybe guards on either side of him. And Philip comes running alongside the chariot and here's the man reading from the scroll of Isaiah and he's reading Isaiah 53. And um, he asked him, do you understand what you're reading? He said, no, I need somebody to help me with that. And so this is where we pick up in the text after he had heard, Philip had overheard what, what the Ethiopian was reading. Then we come to what uh, Philip does in the text. Because the, the Ethiopian says, get up here with me. Climb on up with me, you know. And I assure you that's the only way he was going to get on that chariot was by invitation, uh, at least as far as I understand things. So let's go to the text and let's see what it says. Verse 34, the eunuch asked Philip, tell me, was the prophet about, uh, talking about himself or someone else? So beginning with the same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? You can, Philip answered, if you believe with all your heart. And the eunuch replied, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. Now verse 39, when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Father in heaven, bless your name and bless your word. We ask you in the name of Jesus, amen. Well, I want to speak to you this morning about baptism for a few moments. And this title in front of you, why can't I be baptized? I want you to see that. Now, baptisms in Peru always found a way to become a celebration. And we made them into celebrations. Sometimes it was small if it was held in a local church that happened to have a baptistry. But a lot of times it was big because the churches would get together on one of the legal holidays and they would rent buses and they would drive out to a nice area, remote area that had a small stream. And there we would have a picnic and, and we would celebrate baptisms from all of the churches churches who were there. Every time we immersed a person and they came up out of the water, we would sing, I have decided to follow Jesus, but not in English. He decidido seguir a Cristo. He decidido seguir a Cristo. He decidido seguir a Cristo. No vuelvo atrás, 
no vuelvo atrás. And we would do that every time. And so we might have 20 or 30 people to baptize. And so we'd baptize them and we'd bring them up. And every time we did, we'd sing that again. And uh, over and over and over. It was fun. It was, it was an exciting thing. One time we baptized in an in-the-ground cistern. Now, I'm about 6'3". I used to be 6'4", and used to be a little bit more than 6'4", but something happened over the years. Anyway, um, they filled that thing up to here on me. It was right, it was really to my armpits. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. They filled that thing up. And so I stepped down in it, and another missionary was there with me. His name was Dennis Davidson. <laughs> and he's shorter than I am. So he came up to his neck, you know, and we're standing there in the water together. Oh, that water was cold. That water was cold, cold. And we're standing there in that water, and we're going to baptize 17 people. Now remember, Every time we baptize someone, they'd sing, I've decided to follow Jesus. It's customary for the preacher, and in this case, I was the lead. We were, we were co-pastors of this church. I was the lead uh, on this. It's customary for them to preach a message <laughs> before you baptize. Keep that in mind. So I'm standing in this frigid water, and I can't speak. My voice sounds like it does now, except it's from the cold. And I'm saying, oh, there's nothing there. And I'm preaching to them, and then it's time to baptize. First one we're going to baptize is a, 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 a young lady, beautiful young lady named Flor, which means flower. And she was short. She was under five feet tall. We recognized because the water of the water came. We better put a chair in there or people are going to drown trying to get in that water with us. So we got a chair and we physically grabbed her and carried her over to the chair and stood her on the chair. And I asked her, as you hear me do here in English, I, I quoted Romans 3, uh, 10, 9 and, uh, to her, and I said, who's your Lord? And she said, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. And I said, and I, according to your confession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And she shouts, wait! And I said, what's wrong? I can't swim. <laughs> I said, well, you don't have to swim, Flor. We're, we're not, you, you don't have to swim. And so I say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Wait, wait! <laughs> and I said, what's wrong? You might drop me. We're not going to drop you. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Wait! Everybody's laughing but me. I was too cold. <laughs> we finally got all our problems resolved, and we said, now look, just squat down. You know, we're not going to lean you back. Just squat down. You know, it wasn't going to take much because the water's already up to her neck. And so we got her baptized and, uh, and carried her out of the water. And then so, so we finally got there singing, He decidido seguir a Cristo. 17 people. So this took close to an hour, including the message. 17 people. Did I tell you the water was cold? 17 people. I have always thanked the Lord since then for heated water in baptistries in the United States. Now, 2,000 years ago, this deacon named Philip shares this gospel, and the, the, eunuch, the, Phil, the Ethiopian says, why can't I be baptized? And that's what I want to speak to you about this morning. I want to tell you why you should be baptized, how you should be baptized, and when you can be baptized. Very simple. And you, you know this already. You know all of it. And so let me, let me share with you a minute this message of baptism, this biblical message of baptism. Did y'all know that Jesus was baptized? Y'all know that? Of course you did. Of course you knew that. He modeled baptism for us. That's what Jesus did. He walked 
60 miles so that John the Baptist could baptize him. Wow, 60 miles. That's here to Gulfport, y'all. Can you imagine that? He walked 60 miles here to Gulfport, uh, distance-wise, to be... I wonder how, how many days you reckon it took him to, be, to walk 60 miles. How many days? Yes, ma'am. 50 days, I think it's a little less than 50. You can probably walk maybe five or six days to walk that, I would guess, 10, 12 miles a day maximum that, that he would have probably walked. And, and uh, he comes down there to where John the Baptist is and, and he, he gets baptized. Now, we had a man who used to walk two miles every, every evening because the church where we had planted this church only met on Sunday evenings. The people worked in the daytime and they could only come at night. Kind of sounds like what you're reading the Bible, Dr. Berger. And uh, so they would come and he would walk every, he was in his 70s. And uh, he had a hip problem. And so when he walked, he'd kind of walk like this, two miles. And then walk home two miles. They do that all the time. Uh, so he goes, I bet y'all know people won't even drive two miles to go to church. And this fellow walked like that. Jesus walked 60 miles to be baptized. So he models it for us. It's important. You reckon it's important if he's willing to walk 60 miles to be baptized? You reckon that's important? I think so. I think so. But here's something else about Jesus. He didn't just model it. He mandated it. He mandated it. He gave us the great commission there in Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go and make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And that's what he did. He mandated. So he begins his ministry of baptism. And he ends his ministry uh, by commanding baptism. And now is that the only place in the Bible that talks about this, the mandate of baptism? No. Mark 16, 16 tells us, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. What? Does that mean baptism saves you? No. It's got another message I'll get to in just a few minutes. But it's, it's from the Lord, and that's what he said. Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized. And our English translation says for the remission of sin. But it really, if you want to translate it correctly from the Greek into, into English, is because of the remission of sins, because your sins have been forgiven you. That's why you're baptized. And so he, he tells us that. Acts 10, 48, the scripture tells us who can forbid water that these men might be baptized when the Cornelius and those who were with him were baptized. Scripture gives us all kinds of mandates of the importance of baptism. And here's something else. It has a meaning for us. It tells us a story baptism does. Uh, it is the example of death burial and resurrection. In fact, Romans 6, 4, which is a passage a lot of times we preach when we're going to baptize someone, Romans 6, 4 actually says to us right there, that as many of you were baptized in, into Christ, you were buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. And uh, that's what the Scripture teaches us uh, about baptism. It's an example of death, burial, and resurrection. Now, i got to ask you a question. When you bury someone, you just throw that body on top of the ground, walk away. Well, that's kind of cruel, isn't it? Think about that for just a minute. Or, or, or do you dig a hole and put that burial coffin down inside a hole? Which do you do? Which do y'all think? That's good. That's okay. I want her to answer. That's good. And, and, and so that's perfectly fine. She's teaching the adults when she does this. So listen to me. Some of you are sitting there thinking, well, I know people. You can't stick in the ground. You ever been to New Orleans? You can't dig a hole in the ground there. While you dig six inches, you find water there. Oh, I wish we'd find oil six inches deep on my land. Well, anyway, 
They have, they have mausoleums, they have tombs, and, and they still fully immerse them because they stick them inside that particular tomb. That's what they do. Uh, uh, it's completely inside. That's how Jesus was buried. He was placed inside, but he was fully enclosed, which is what the picture of baptism is. Now, it's also, it's also in evidence it gives evidence that you've decided to be a Christ follower. It's one of the very first steps of obedience after believing. Read about a boy. Somebody was talking to him about the Lord, and he was, he was young, and he prayed to receive Christ. And whoever was talking with him, Sunday school teacher says, now that you believe, you need to go to the pastor and tell him, I have trusted Christ and now I need to be baptized. He said, okay, I'll do that. So he went and found a preacher. He said, I have trusted Christ, and now I need to get advertised. You know, y'all hear that? <laughs> That's a good picture, because baptism is telling a story that you're buried with Christ, and you're raised to walk in newness of life. It's a new Life in a new story. Well, let me tell you about the manner of baptism. Let me just share it with you real quick. And I'm talking about how you should be baptized right now. Uh, th this is the word baptizo. Uh, this particular word is a word that means to immerse. Uh, and that means to put something all the way in the water. You know that. And, and when we baptized... Uh, down, down in Peru, we, most of the places we had, we didn't have a baptistry in the churches. We didn't have that. There was only a little bit of water. And, uh, and, and this is a desert where we lived. And so we would find a stream and we'd have to dam that stream up just to make enough water to get that person in. Now, I'm telling you, the water, there was so little water. And Neil, I don't know how it was in Argentina, but that water wouldn't come up to your knees. So we'd have to have the person lay down in the water and then lean them back because they'd have to sit down and then lean them back to get them under the water. But we would dam it up and do that. One time, one of the churches said, let's meet over at such and such a place. And uh, so we went over there and... Um, to this place, and all that was there was an irrigation aqueduct. And it stands about this tall, and they're about this wide, and it's just a canal where the water runs. Well, this particular place where the water was, um, my memory is not pleasant about this place. There was algae and grass growing in it, you know, and water grass. And uh, the, the, the fragrance was not the choice cologne of the day. Let's just put it that way. It was not pleasant at all. And I said, you won't be baptized in that? And he said, yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> well, I tried to look to see if I was going to be able to baptize him without getting in. That wasn't happening. I was going to have to get in the water. And I thought, oh my goodness me, what kind of disease am I going to come out this time? And uh, I mean, it was tough. And we got him down that water and, and uh, got out of that. And I'm thinking, give me some clean clothes, please, quick. This is, this is bad. But I got so spiritual after that, I let other people baptize, by the way. I'm telling you. The Ethiopian looked up and he said, look, water. He's in desert too. Why can't I be baptized? And they went into the water, the Bible tells us. And they came up out of the water. This is a picture. This is a very direct statement, ladies and gentlemen, about immersion. Not just there, but over in the Gospels, Mark chapter 1, verses 9 and 10, going into the water and coming up out of the water uh, when they baptized the Lord Jesus. John 3, 23, the Scripture tells us that John the Baptist went to Anon because he went there because there was much water. And he wanted to baptize where there was enough water to baptize. The very word itself, to dip, to immerse. That's what it means. Now there's a moment. There is a moment 
when a person is baptized. When can I be baptized? That's a great question to ask. You're baptized, ladies and gentlemen, after you believe. You're not baptized in order to believe. You're baptized after you believe. And the Ethiopian said he believed that Jesus was the Son of God. But he didn't just say some words by saying that because the devil believes and trembles, doesn't he? So it means more than that. Philip had preached Jesus to him. Reckon what Philip preached. What do you suppose he preached? Because you see, the... It depends on what you believe. And this is what Philip preached. Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. And Jesus Christ lived this sinless life. And he died on the cross for, for our sins. Now there's an important word right there. S-I-N-S. Y'all listen to me. There's a very important word. Sins. Because when you say, I believe Jesus died for my sin. You're saying, I believe I'm a sinner. And as I told you all the other day, I was counseling with someone and I asked them that very question. And they said, no, according to my church, I'm not a sinner. Because I've never done anything with the intent to, to sin. And yet it requires intent. I was, whoa, uh, we got to have a talk. We got to have a long talk. Because John says in 1 John, if a person says, I have not sinned, he's not telling the truth, he's lying. So here we have this confession, I'm a sinner. And Jesus died for my sins. Jesus took my place for my sins. And you believe that Jesus was buried. God, he died and he was buried. And you believe that God raised him from the dead. 1 Corinthians 15 shares that very thing. Oh! But there's one more thing. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. That's what, that's what the Bible says. The word confess means you agree with God that Jesus is Lord. God says He's God. God says He's Lord. And you agree with God that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's what you do. Now I want to finish this by emphasizing the must of baptism one more time. This mandate. Even though baptism does not save you, you must, listen to me. Wake up and listen. You must be baptized after you believe. Now just imagine a person says they don't believe baptism is all that important because it's just a symbol. And they come up to me and they say, I won't see a picture. You got family? Yeah, I got family. I got a wife and three girls. I get asked that a lot, by the way. And I say, yeah, I got a family. I got a wife and three girls. Well, you got a picture? Sure. And so I show them a picture of my house. Or maybe David's yacht. You got a yacht? Just say yes. Okay. <laughs> and they say, I thought you had a family. What are you showing me this picture for? Well, a picture's just a symbol. Any old symbol does is, is good, right? And some folks say, when it comes to baptism, it's just a symbol. Any old symbols do. It, it, it doesn't mean anything. It does mean something too, ladies and gentlemen. It means that you confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord. Wife, you know, if I did that with someone, they'd say, you crazy. They'd be half right. But you hear me, ladies and gentlemen. If you've never been born again, then you need to believe the good news that I just shared, the gospel that, uh, that I just shared in a, in a capsule, in a nutshell. You need to believe that. And after you have believed the gospel, you need to uh, call and you called on Jesus to save you. You need to request baptism as a believer in Christ Jesus. Listen to me. Listen carefully. If you've been baptized before, but you got saved after you were baptized... You got saved after you went through that symbol of death, burial, and resurrection. If you did that, then you need to be baptized as a believer. Because baptism is for believers. 
It's not to make you a believer. It is for believers. And if you have believed and never been baptized, then it's time for you to come to me during this invitation and to say, Pastor, today I want you to know I've trusted Christ. He's my Lord, but I need to be baptized. And it's time for you to do that. And this is the day. Father, this is your invitation time. And I certainly pray that you'll take this invitation time and you will use this time to speak to the hearts of all of us present. But that you'll call those that are yours and that need to confess Christ and that need to obey Christ through baptism. And this is going to be the invitation this morning. If you've trusted Jesus, but you've not yet been baptized as a believer, you need to come forward this morning. If you say, I, I'm just a little frightened to do that, ask someone close to you, would you walk with me? I want to go tell the preacher, I've trusted Jesus and I need to be baptized. If you're one of those who has said, yes, I was baptized as a child, but I believed later in life, then you need to request baptism today. You need to come and be baptized as a believer. If God's told you, this is your place for your church membership, you come speak to me. If God has spoken to you and said, you need to be born again, and you don't yet understand, come talk with me. We'll sit down together. We'll discuss how to be born again, how to trust the Lord. Father, take this invitation time, and for your glory, reach into the hearts of all of us. In Jesus' name, amen.